Praise the Lord. I know, um, can you all hear me? This psalm is a very familiar and a very common psalm that, you know, we all have enjoyed and uh, recited um, throughout our life, you know, especially when we go through uh, tough times, you know, and I have done, done that many times. And what a beautiful psalm this is, you know, this is such a uh, comforting psalm when we read these verses, it's so comforting to us. Um, but... I want to, want to kind of focus on what this really, really means this morning, you know. Because I, I didn't have an understanding of this psalm before I really started studying uh, on it, like, uh, deeply. The promise here is that God will keep us safe, that God will be our refuge. And throughout the verses, that's what, what is, uh, the psalmist is saying, that he will, he will keep us safe. But... How do, you, how do we understand this? What, is, what does that really mean? Does that mean that we will not have any trouble in life? Does that mean that we will not have any difficult times in our life? No, that is not what it means. But I know what the devil wants us to believe. The devil wants us to believe that, that if you are the child of God, you are children of God, then you will never have any trouble. That you will, you will want to believe that, hey, you know, God is there for me, so why should I be in trouble? That's what the devil wants you to believe. And you know, um, and how do we know this? You know, let's look at um, uh, some of the passages from the, from the Bible. Let's turn our um, attention to ch uh, Luke chapter 4, verses 9 to 12. Luke chapter 4. Verses 9 to So you know where, um, where the devil is uh, taking this passage from. It's from Psalms 91. He is uh, telling Jesus that, you know, you just, you know, uh, jump from uh, the pinnacle here and God will, you know, God, you, you, know, you will not suffer. You will not uh, have any problems. But what uh, he is trying to do here is he's trying to distract Jesus from fulfilling his purpose. Because he's telling him that, hey, you don't have to go to the cross. You don't have to suffer or go through all these um, sufferings. Because if God really loves you, why would he put you through all these sufferings? Because if he really loves you, he wants you to enjoy your life. And, and he's using the passage to distract God. And he, this is what he will do to us too. Like, you know, when we go through difficult times, he will tell us, hey, God's promise is that he will protect you. He will keep you safe. He will keep, uh, he's a refuge. So if we believe that, what happens is when we have tough times, what will happen? We will pull from God. We will think that, hey, you know, the promise is not true. It's a lie. Everything what he's saying is a lie. And that's what um, the devil is, uh, is trying to do, um, you know, if we, if we believe like that. Also, I want you to know that what God is telling us is that he wants us to trust him completely. It's not about what we are going through in our life. It is completely trusting him in every situation in our life. I want you to um, turn also to uh, Genesis chapter 50 verse 20. Genesis chapter 50 verse 20. So he's saying, um, this is Joseph speaking to his brothers. He said, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. 
the saving of many lives. See, what Joseph is saying here is that all the things that he went through in his life, like, you know, being sold to the Egyptians, being put in the, uh, in the, in the well, and, you know, all the, um, you know, that he had to go to jail, convicted of a crime that he did not commit. He went through all these troubles because God was trying to keep him safe. Because we don't know what would have happened if Joseph had stayed where he, maybe with his parents or with his, you know, brothers. We don't know what would have happened. But he went through all this trouble in life so that what? In the end, he could fulfill the purpose of saving many lives and also to save his own life and his uh, family's life. Right? And, and that's the same thing that we say in uh, uh, Romans 8.28. Uh, please read eight, uh, Romans 8.28 for me, please. I know it's a, it's a common... See, see uh, pay attention to the word, work together. He's not saying that all things will be good for you. He's saying all things work together for good who love, uh, for who love God and called to his purpose. So everything that happens in our life is God is uh, doing those things so that he can keep us safe. But it's very difficult to understand. You know, when we go through really tough times, it's very difficult to un uh, understand this. And you know, um, Jesus makes it even uh, clearer to his disciples in uh, Luke chapter 21 verse 16, 17, and 18, um, Luke chapter 21, 16, 17, and 18. So, I mean, it's, this is a very interesting passage. It says, you will be betrayed even by parents, brothers and sisters, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. Everyone will hate you because of me, but not a hair of your head will perish. How is that possible? What, is, what does that really mean? He's saying that you will die, but none of your hair will perish? It doesn't make any sense, right? See, for God, the focus is eternal life. For God, the focus is our soul. He's not really worried about what is happening in our life while we are here. He's not really worried about it. He's telling his disciples that you will go through these troubles. You will, some might even die. But you, I will keep your soul safe. You're never, your soul will never be perished. That's what he's trying to tell the disciples. Even in the promises that what God is saying in Psalms uh, is that he will keep us safe, not our own like earthly body or earthly possessions, nothing that he, he's not talking about what is happening here. What he's saying is that no matter what happens in your life, everything I am doing it so that I can keep your soul safe. In the end, what matters is whatever you're going through in your life, he is doing all that so that why? In the end, that he could bring you together with him and we can live an eternal life with him. Amen? That's what he's trying to do. And, you know, um, one of the things that happens to us when we go through trouble uh, times of trouble is that we, we think that it's because of our sin. We think that it is because of something that we did bad in our life. And... Um, and it's so, so difficult. Our, our, our brain and our mind and our emotions will keep telling us that. And even our society is like that. You know, society will try to tell you, like, when you are going through trouble, they will tell you, hey, maybe he did something wrong. Maybe he was like, you know, maybe he's living in sin. Maybe that's what is happening. Uh, one of the things that happened, uh, I, I think I mentioned this to, about my brother. His baby uh, was born... Um, you know, not like a normal baby, you know, um, they're struggling. I mean, the baby cannot even walk. She's three years old now. He, she, she cannot walk. 
And the first couple of months and six months, seven months, I told him, I, I said, you ought to be very, very careful during this time because the society will tell you, people will come and tell you, hey, maybe you need to correct some ways. Maybe you need to correct something in your life that, you, that, is, that you're not doing right. Maybe that's what is going on. That's why uh, society is not very, very um, patient or very kind to us when we go through times. But God is telling you that whatever happens in your life, God is doing it so that he can keep your soul safe. You need to be encouraged when you're going through troubled times that God is doing it for you to keep you safe. Don't listen to the devil because he will distract you using the scripture. You know, some of the scriptures that you have learned in your life, he will bring it back to you saying that, hey, the scripture says this. So why are you going through this? He will just try to distract you uh, and, and, and make you believe that you are going through because God doesn't love you. That is what his strategy is. So please be very careful. You know, let's, let's come back to um, Psalms 91. 91 verse 4. Is it? Yep. Yes, he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You know what God is trying to tell us this morning is that he's not promising us to keep us from trouble. What he is telling us that he is going to be with us through your troubles, in your troubles. Don't be disheartened or don't be discouraged because God is telling you, just like, you know, the, 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 um, the image here is of, of, of a bird, like, you know, or, uh, like a hen, you know, people who have lived in India, they know when uh, the chicks are small, what the hen will do is uh, anytime an eagle or a, a you know owl comes to you know to cast these uh, chicks, what it'll do is it'll cover the the chick under the wings, and I've seen that many times. And so what he's doing is the 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 hen is what he's doing is it, it is being a substitute when all this trouble is coming uh, towards uh, its chicks. That is what God is doing for us. That's what He's promising us that when you are going through trouble, when the when the devil and the circumstances in the world is coming against you, don't be discouraged because everything in the end, like Roman says, will work together for good so that in the end we can enjoy our eternity with God. Amen. So let us be um, encouraged by that. And the first, second verse it says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. That's what he is wanting uh, for, uh, for us this morning. You know, Trust is when you know that anything that happens to us will be good for us. That is the kind of trust that God is asking us this morning to have. So that no matter what happens in your life, everything will work, for, work out for our good. May God bless us with these words.